My name is April Roger, and I'm coming at you live from North Georgia. And I am just here to give you some anxiety information. I don't know about you, but I suffer from anxiety. And over the last year, it has lessened and lessened each month. I've had less and less anxiety attacks. And I want to tell you how I've done it. And I want to share this information with you. So, I'm going to give you five tips. Like, if you read the description, it says I'm going to give you five tips of things that you can do while you're in the middle of an anxiety attack. So, if you're in the middle of it and it's happening, these five things will help you come out of it and lengthen the process. I know sometimes anxiety attacks can last 20, 30 minutes. Those are painful. And by the time you're out of it, you're so exhausted you can't you can't even pick yourself up. So some people have anxiety like that. Some people have, you know, just mild anxiety and then they have an anxiety attack that lasts like 30 seconds to a minute. So this is going to help you no matter what kind of anxiety you have, whether it's big, large amounts, or it's, you know, the less severe. Dang cat. Are you coming in or what? In or out? Okay. In or out? Brady cat. So anyway, I'm literally just here to help. I just want to give you some information and hopefully this will help you as it has me. I have done so much better like I said, as the months have went by in this past year of me using these techniques and more, um, and just changing a little bit here and there in my life, each month it has gotten easier for me. And I just want to share that knowledge. So, first of all, let's talk about anxiety. What causes it? Why do you get it? Why do some people have it, some people don't? Um, where does it come from? So, there is no one reason that a person develops anxiety. But the majority of people that do develop anxiety develop that in childhood or young adult. <clears throat> well, young adulthood, early childhood, kind of right in there. And there's so many reasons that we can develop this. <clears throat> now... If you can't stay on for the whole entire video, I completely understand. Just know that um, these tips are what to do when you're in an anxiety attack. And I also have seven more tips, six more tips, seven more tips on what to do to do daily to exercise your muscles and to calm yourself and relax yourself to stop anxiety or at least help stop prevent an anxiety attack from ever happening. Um, I'm not a doctor, so disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. This is what's helped me. Don't come off your medication without talking to your doctor because um, I'm not one. So I'm just telling you what's helped me. So if you want those extra tips on what to do to prevent an anxiety attack, shoot me a message. You can click my nose right there. Click it. And it'll say, message me. You just tap on that link. It'll take you straight to my inbox and say, I want those tips. Or give me the tips. Or send me the tips. Whatever you got to say. Or you can um, just send me a message that says anxiety. Or comment below anxiety. If you don't want to message me, just comment below anxiety and I'll send them to you. Anyway... So now that we got that out of the way, I just didn't want anybody to hop off and not hear that information. So let's get into these tips that I'm going to give you now. Um, so there's no real rhyme or reason to who develops it and who doesn't. Some people, it's genetics. Some people, it's their childhood altogether because it's extremely traumatic. Um, some people are more isolated when they are children. Their parents don't take them out or anything like that. They're homeschooled. They don't have really a social life. Or it's an abuse kind of isolation. Um, so they 
tend to have more anxiety, especially social anxiety. Some people live in a really um, high strong environment where everybody around them is kind of uptight and high strong and it causes anxiety later on in their life. Um, but there's usually always a major reason that unlike the rhyme or reason for who has it, there's always a major reason that an anxiety attack is triggered and it's always stress. It's always stress. So, regardless to what kind of stress that is for you, whether it's, you know, like an everyday stress, like an everyday life stress, whether it's an environmental stress, sometimes a place can trigger you. Um, if there's something about a place or it looks familiar, it can trigger you. There's situational stress like bills and you have to go out of town for the holidays or you're out of work sick so you're worried about your job or you just lost your job. Those are more like a situational anxiety. Um, and everybody is different. You know, some people have all of the above and stress period is what triggers them. So anytime they feel stressed or they feel a little overwhelmed, they have an anxiety attack. And like I said, I have seven other tips that are gonna help you with that that'll, if you do them daily, like I suggest, and there, there is nothing that's very time consuming, but if you do them daily, then it will help prevent anxiety attacks later in life, like during the weeks or anything, even when you get stressed. There are techniques to help you stop that. So anyway, let's get into these five tips. There's five things that can calm you while you're in the thick of it. Like when you feel it, when, you, when you're when you having it, when it's there, it, your chest is tight, it's hard to breathe, um, you're shaky, whatever your effects are that you get. Yeah, my cat hates my be going live. He just, he hates it. I don't know why. Um, it's not like I'm talking to anything but a phone in his eyes, but he hates it. So anyway, the first thing you can do when you feel it, when you're in the thick of it, you feel it coming on, start a breathing technique. There's many different kind of techniques. Find one that works for you, whether it just be long inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. I, and I find that actually saying that in my mind, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out actually helps calm me. Just, just saying it as I'm doing it helps. So, that's number one. Number two, and number one and number two go together, and they're really good together. Um, as you're doing your breathing techniques, you're going to go into number two, which is visualization. So, picture yourself somewhere that calms you, somewhere that makes you happy, um, whether it be a childhood memory, an adult memory, or somewhere you want to go. Like, maybe you want to go to Hawaii and you've never been, but you've seen pictures of the island or something. Or you've seen pictures of this one particular place you want to go on the beach or something. Picture yourself there while you're still doing your breathing exercise. And you need to really visualize this place. It's your happy place. Really visualize it. And doing that can put you into almost a meditative state, which is a really great thing. Because if you're in a meditative state and you are forcing your body to relax and pull yourself back in control, because that's really all, all it is. Anxiety for many, many people, it's nothing more than like an anxiety attack. Now, I can't say why you have anxiety. I know what caused mine. I don't know what caused yours. Um, but what I do know is that an anxiety attack, when, it's, when it sets in, when it's happening, the reason it's happening is because we're stressed and we're out of control. So when you start controlling your breathing and visualizing where you're at, what you're doing, and you really clearly see it in your mind, you're taking back your control. And that's what you need to do in the middle of an anxiety attack. So your breathing and your visualization, you're picturing your happy place, where you want to be, where you have been, 
whatever it is for you, you visualize a happy place. And once you see it clearly and you're breathing, you'll feel yourself start to calm down. If you're not the type of person that can visualize easily, you can't draw up a, an image in your head immediately. I know that that took me time. I had to learn that. That was not something I was born with. I literally had to learn how to visualize things. And it took a lot of practice. So if you're not that person, then we're going to skip the visualization and we're going to go straight in to continue to breathe. But you need to talk to yourself. Admit that you are anxious. Admit that you're having an anxiety attack. Once you call it out, you take its power. And that is, again, what this is all about, is power. It's who's in control and who's not. And when you're in the thick of an anxiety attack, you feel like you've lost control. So admit it. Admit that you're in it. Don't fight it. Don't pretend it's not happening. Breathe. Admit that it's happening. And you'll feel it. You start to feel like you're more in control once you admit that you are in the thick of it. That, oh my God, this has happened. This is happening. So you're going to admit that you're in it. And you're going to feel that start to calm. And when you start to feel it, and you're, you're starting to feel calm down, you're going to change your state. You're going to change your state of being. You're going to change your thoughts from I'm anxious to I'm grateful. And this is tip number five. So number four is change your thoughts and change your state of being. Number three was admit that you're anxious. And now we're going into number five. You're going to change your thoughts and your state into a gratitude state. Or, you know, maybe you have a better plan of what state you want to be in, a happy, relaxed state. And if you can visualize that up, then you don't have to skip number two and you could have done it then. But normally, if you can't visualize, the next best thing is gratitude. So you're going to pull yourself into a gratitude state and you're going to feel that gratitude. Whether you're grateful for your children, you're grateful for your wife, your husband, whatever it is. Um... You're grateful for the car that you're in. You're grateful for the house you live in, the bed, the roof over your head, whatever. We can all find things to be grateful for. And that's a fact. Like, you're breathing air. You're alive and you woke up and you got out of the bed today. You didn't die in your sleep. So there's your reason to be grateful right there. So you're going to move into a gratitude state. You're going to start saying out loud or at least out loud in your head. The things you're grateful for. If you want to talk out loud, it helps me. So I'll sit in the car. Like if I have an anxiety attack in the middle of the car. Which I find I have a lot nowadays. They didn't all. It wasn't always like that. But now the majority of my anxiety comes from driving. Driving in like Atlanta traffic. It gets me real anxious. Causes anxiety. So I can literally just start listing off the things while I'm driving and I'm having an anxiety attack or I'm pulled over having an anxiety attack, whatever it is, I can literally just start naming the things I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for my daughter. I'm grateful for my brother's life. I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful that my mom is safe out there on the road that she's driving on. My dad's health's okay. Whatever it is. I'm grateful for the roof over my head. I'm grateful for the car I drive. And just keep doing it. Because stress and anger and anxiousness cannot live in the same space as gratitude. Gratitude is so big and it is so massive. So you can't just say it and not believe it or mean it or feel it. When you're saying you're grateful for things that you're truly grateful for, you feel it. You, you start to feel it in that space. You start to feel the love that you have for these people you're naming off. You start to feel the appreciation for the fact that you woke up this morning. Whatever it is that you're listing off, you start to feel those things. And when you start to feel those things, then your anxiousness and your anger that comes with an anxiety attack cannot live in the same space as gratitude. So you can always replace anxiety with gratitude. And it's what works for me. 
it's amazing for me. Um, like I said, I had to learn how to visualize, but some people are just born with that gift. You know, they have an imagination and they never grow out of it as a kid and they can vividly think of a place like they're on the beach and they can vividly think of it to the point where they can feel the sand under their toes. And if you're that kind of person, then that's where you should go. Start vividly imagining the place you're at, feel the sand under your toes or the grass under your toes or whatever it is and control your thoughts in the beginning of focusing on breath and visualizing where you're at. And that's gonna pull you out of it. But if you're not somebody that can visualize, live in gratitude. Gratitude is where you want to be. So number one was breathe. Number two is visualization. Number three was admit that you're anxious. Admit to it. Don't fight it. Admit it. Uh, number four is change your state of being. And number five is practice gratitude. So, there's your five tips on how to get yourself out of an anxiety attack when you're in the thick of it. When, especially, like I said, mine tend to happen when I'm driving. So, I'm either pulled over or I'm stuck in traffic and I'm having an anxiety attack and I'm trying to stop it because i got to drive and pay attention to the traffic jam I'm in. But, um... I have another seven tips for you that these are things that you can do. They're daily exercises. They don't take long. It's not like I'm asking you to focus an hour of your time on this, but these are just like daily habits that you can implement into your life slowly or all at once, whatever you have the time for, and small adjustments to your day and to your life that can help you. So if you want those extra seven tips, then shoot me a message. Like I said, you can click my nose. You'll see the thing that says message me, or you can just comment anxiety in the comments and I'll get you that information. So anyway, I hope you have a wonderful night. I appreciate